The humble horror movie has the ability to instill you with instant dread, total discomfort or scar an image into your brain with just one solitary nicely crafted shot or sequence. Having already covered 10 such shots, we're now back with another 10 that will stay with you long after a film is wrapped up. So with that in mind, I'm Andrew from What Culture Horror and here are 10 more horror movie shots that will send a chill down your spine. Number 10. The Doctor Will See You Now How so Haunted Hill 1999. No, not a reference to Dr. Britt Baker DMD. I see you wrestling fans. But instead, it's the remake of the 1959 film of the same name. Here, William Malone's House on Haunted Hill sees a group of strangers offered $1 million each if they can survive the night in the long abandoned Vanacut Psychiatric Institute for the Criminally Insane. One such stranger is former TV star Melissa Marr. And when our group splits up, because of course they do, it's, it's a horror film, it's Melissa who has the most startling encounter of the entire movie. When looking through a camcorder, Melissa sees a doctor and two nurses operating on some unfortunate fella. The catch is, when she looks at this scene with her own eyes, all that's there is a dusty old operating table. Taking one more look though through the camcorder, Melissa not only sees these eerie figures once again, but this time they creepily turn to stare at her before all hell breaks loose. Number 9. The Mask Slips Superhost Brandon Christensen's super host sees travel vloggers Claire and Teddy staying at a remote property owned by Gracie Gillum's Rebecca, a quirky, slightly unhinged figure who Claire immediately sees as being the perfect driving force to bring in those likes, subscribes, and shares. Hey, of course, while you're here, be sure to like, subscribe, and share. With Superhost, though, by its final act, Rebecca has gone full-on murderous with Claire and Teddy both in her sights. But one of the first glimpses of her true nature comes during an encounter with a host who previously been given a negative review by our central couple. Played by genre fave Barbara Crampton, this rival host is confronted by Rebecca and told to leave the property before the police are called. But so far, so calm and composed. That is until Rebecca maniacally screams out about how she'll cut Crampton's Vera open. Here, Rebecca is almost in a trance. A trance she snaps out of with an angelic smile, showing the first chilling slip of the mask for our titular super host. Number 8. The gut-wrenching truth Redwood. Tom Patton's Redwood is one of the best vampire films of the past decade. Focusing on Josh and Beth, a couple on a national park hiking trip after Josh has sadly been diagnosed with leukemia. As darkness creeps in for this woodland setting, it's clear that there's something out in the trees. And we soon find our lovebirds battling hordes of vampiric beasts. Finally reaching the mountain top to seek help, Josh is shockingly dragged out into the night by a vampire. Somehow returning to the distraught, emotionally wrecked Beth though, the audience is then shown the chilling shot of Josh slyly holding a needle, which he then plunges into his girlfriend's neck to drug her, but the needle shot when you see it in his hand, it's just, it's so ominous and creepy. And it's then revealed that Josh had been given just six months to live, but he'd heard of a twisted bargain plan where sacrificing a loved one on this mountain will cure him as he then slits Beth's throat and watches her die. It's grim, it's horrible. But the kicker here though, the real kicker, is Josh was right and he actually is cured, while Beth, she's turned into one of the mindless, bloodlusting vampires who parade the wilderness. Number 7. Dollface Cozies Up the Strangers Pray at Night The Strangers Pray at Night wastes absolutely no time amassing its first victims, when elderly couple Cheryl and Marv are awakened by some knock knock knocking at their trailer door. That'd be Dollface, who is already actually in the trailer by the time Cheryl gets out of bed to answer the door, and then she's killed off screen. For Marv, he'd remained in bed during all of this, and so of course he presumes that the figure who's made its way to bed is clearly his wife. Oh, how wrong he is, as we get the eerie shots of Dollface cozied up in bed behind Marv as he starts to piece together the, yeah, maybe, maybe something isn't quite right here. With that, The Strangers Prey at Night is off to the races. Number 6. Silly, Silly Aaron. Creep. A found footage affair, Creep as director and co-writer Patrick Bryce as Aaron, a struggling videographer who takes up the terminally ill Joseph's offer to document some memories for his pregnant wife and unborn child. Played by co-writer Mark Duplass, 
Joseph soon becomes properly sinister, stating how he sexually assaulted his wife Angela, hides Aaron's car keys, and then we get a phone call from Angela who states that Joseph is her brother and that Aaron just, yeah, just get out of there, mate. It's, it's not going well. It's not good. Later, deciding to take Joseph up on the offer of one final meeting so that he could apologize, Aaron heads out and waits on a lakeside beach. Uh, when the audience then, we get the extremely uncomfortable shots of Joseph arriving behind the unknowing Aaron, donning his creepy peach fuzz wolf mask and lifting an axe over Aaron's head. The pace in here, that's the key, it's fantastic. It draws out every ounce of tension. And yes, Aaron ends up butchered, you silly, silly rabbit. Number five, the family business. Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers. Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers is one of the best entries in the entire Halloween franchise. And it features the twisted final shots of young Jamie Lloyd holding bloodstained scissors after stabbing her foster mother. All as the ever great, ever erratic Sam Loomis screams in traumatized terror. For context, Jamie is the daughter of the killed in a car accident, Laurie Strode, having been adopted by the Carruthers family. And when Michael Myers hears he's got a niece, uh, well, of course, he heads to Haddonfield to hunt down the poor girl. After Michael is shot down a mining shaft at the film's close, we find Darlene Carruthers running a hot bath for her foster daughter, only for the action to switch to the first-person view of a masked person stabbing Darlene. Yes, of course, that person would be Jamie Lloyd, who's creepily decked out in an outfit similar to young Michael's in the opening minutes of the first Halloween. Like, properly, properly soul-crushing stuff upon the first watch. Number four, Bathsheba arrives, The Conjuring. Sure, the wider Conjuring universe has been soured somewhat by a few stinkers, but James Wan's first Conjuring is genuinely a modern horror classic. Set in 1971, that 2013 movie sees the Perron family move into a Rhode Island farmhouse where spooky shenanigans start to occur, causing them to seek the help of famed demonologists Ed and Lorraine Warren. While there be teases and literal bumps in the night, the first time we properly see Bathsheba, as in the witch whose spirit haunts the family, it's an all-timer of a nerve-shredding shot. After Andrea Perron lets her sleepwalking sister Christine sleep in her bed, a banging noise comes from Andrea's wardrobe, causing Christine to sit upright in bed and let out this ominous nervous gasp as we then get the startling image of Bathsheba sat atop the wardrobe. Yeah, it's proper, proper nightmare fuel, this one. Number three, rubber ball. I come bouncing back to you, the Changeling. Not to be confused with the Angelina Jolie movie of the same name, 1980s The Changeling features an absolutely phenomenal George C. Scott as John Russell, a composer who moves to a remote Seattle mansion after the death of his wife and daughter. There, items start to move, banging noises can be heard, and taps start turning themselves on. Particularly creepy though, John sees the rubber ball of his deceased daughter roll down the stairs of this lavish house causing the poor broken fella to take that ball to a bridge and drop it in the water below as he struggles to deal with his grief. In a disturbing turn of events, wouldn't you know it, but that rubber ball comes bouncing back down those stairs, which is quite the visual in and of itself. But even more jaw-dropping is the shot that reveals the ball is wet. Yeah, it's just properly uncomfortable stuff, but it's from a properly classic movie. Just please check the change there now. It's a great film. Number two, the aerial shot of terror. 30 Days of Night. Set in the sleepy Alaska town of Barrow, 2007's adaptation of Steve Niles' 30 Days of Night graphic novel finds this town thrown into hysteria when a flock of vampires arrive during the annual period where Barrow has one whole month without daylight. Some of the most intimidating, terrifying vampires ever committed to film, these beasts are meticulous, aggressive, clinical, and even have somewhat of a devilish splash of twisted playfulness as they toy with their food. And in a film full of unsettling shots, a particularly bleak one comes when these vampires fully unleash their wrath on the town, as we get a, a beautiful, totally chilling aerial shot of the locals trying desperately to escape their visitors, resulting in a snowy landscape full of dead bodies, bloodshed, gunshots, and just general mass panic. It's so traumatizing, but it is genuinely legitimately beautiful. Number one, Claire's Big Day, the stylist. Jill Gavogzion's feature-length take on her own 2016 short, the stylist stars Najara Townsend as Claire, a troubled, lonely hairstylist whose envy of others finds her drugging her clients and scalping them, then wearing those scalps and dreaming of what life could be like. 
When bride-to-be friend Olivia asks Claire to fix her hair for her upcoming wedding, our stylist is ecstatic and also has the rare opportunity to make some new friends. That is, of course, until Olivia's inner circle mocks Claire, which puts the wheels in motion for the stylist climax. That climax? Why, it's the unnerving shot of the bride cheerily walking down the aisle, friends and family gazing on, only for the wedding veil to be lifted and us to see a smiling, emotional, ultimately distraught and dejected Claire with the scalp of Olivia resting on her head. Yeah, seriously, the stylist is such a smooth, smart, and no pun intended, stylish horror movie that's absolutely worth hunting down.